The quilting world is full of tools to help you sew easier, faster, and more accurately. But which ones are the best to use? Today, I'm inviting you into my sewing room to show you the tools that I've not only tried and tested, but more importantly, why they make my top 10 favorite tool lists. And best of all, some of them are free. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you wanna make. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. This video is about my favorite tools. I'm not talking about your sewing machine or your cutting board and tools or your iron because I have covered them in other videos. I am talking about the accessory tools that you accumulate over time that make a real difference in your sewing. So it's either easier, faster, or more accurate to help keep your space organized. You should only have close at hand those tools that you use either daily or weekly. And I talked about this in my Organize Your Space video part three. And these 10 tools have passed the test and are worthy of zone one and two. The key to piecing is an accurate quarter inch seam. And it took me years of experimenting with specialized feet, marking tape, and plastic ledges to find out that the best solution for me was making a ledge out of masking tape. I make a practice piece and then I adjust the ledge as necessary, but I also use it for so much more. I add ledges to my rulers so I cut more accurately like HSTs and flying geese, and I add it to my cutting board so that I can align my fabric. I also use it to base my quilts on the wall, label my batting, pick up threads, and so much more. So I always keep several rolls in several different sizes beside my sewing table, as well as its cousin, washi tape. Several years ago, after making a video about batting scraps, I was stuck with all this fluff on my mat, and I went on a mission to find a better way to clean it all up. I experimented with a lot of different products until I found this miracle piece of foam that I upcycled from electronics purchase. Here it is in black, here it is in white, and without a lot of effort, it traps threads and fibers on my cutting mat. So anytime that I'm cutting blocks or trimming up, I keep it on my board and clean as I go. I've had this piece of foam for about two years now, so it lasts for a while. Recently, I also found that it's amazing at removing threads from a ripped seam without a lot of effort as well. So keep an eye out for this foam. It has layers of large, firm air pockets that are hard to compress and spring back when you do. And when it's not on my cutting board, I keep it on the right side of my sewing machine. When I first started sewing, I thought all stitch rippers were the same. Then I found a really sharp one. This Clover brand has been my favorite ever since. I have tested other brands and some custom ones, but I really like the way this fits in my hand. It's light with a grippy spot on the handle. I point the red dot below the seam and the pointy side is in the seam allowance and it just slides through like butter. Though I purchased another for my travel bag and one for my studio, this one is the original one that I purchased back in 2017. I've heard people say that you need to buy a new one every year, but I find this this one's still quite sharp. And if I need it, it is right here beside me on the right. Yes, this is a wallpaper seam roller. I took a class with Violet Craft and she said that she had to talk the manufacturer into selling it to her because he couldn't see quilters using it. It has been on my top tool list from the day I purchased it. This is what I use to press my seams open when I don't have an iron 
or I wanna save myself a trip to the ironing board. It is also super useful for paper piecing with all that rolling and folding of paper and fabric. But I also use it when I'm working with anything tacky like a glue or other adhesive. And occasionally I do actually use it for wallpaper seams. And this tool goes in the top left side drawer and goes to every retreat with me. I should buy a second one for my travel kit. Now you might be thinking that this high header is just a mini charm square folded in four. And it is, but it's a simple solution to a common problem. I use it anytime I have eight or more layers going through my machine. As I approach the bump, I lift my foot, slide it underneath, then my presser foot is at the right level for all the layers, and my stitches and seams are straight. Without the high header, my foot would just ram into my fabric. My stitches would shorten and skew until there was enough pressure to get over the hump. Occasionally, I have even folded it into eight when the situation has been thicker. Not bad for a little square of fabric. And I keep it tacked to my pincushion on the right side of my sewing machine because it has a tendency to go wandering when I'm not looking. This is not on the list for the reason you think it is. The product says stiletto, but for that purpose, there are a number of products that will work just as well. I used a cuticle stick for years. I still use these tweezers a lot, and you can even use the tip of a stitch ripper. But this weird plastic hook is on my list because I have found nothing better to remove paper piecing than this. I found out about it accidentally when my friend Laura of Commonwealth Quilts brought it with her when she came to my studio to make her Deco Hills quilt. And as we were removing the papers, I went, what is this amazing tool you have? Honestly, I have removed a lot of papers in my time, and this is by far the best tool. Because it's plastic, it breaks through the paper, but not through the fabric. And this silicone tip here helps pull out those small stubborn pieces. And I keep it in my pencil cup to the right of my machine. If you've seen my video on sewing small, then you've seen this pencil before. It is such a great marking tool as it has three leads. And as I'm working, I can choose the one that shows best on the fabric. Sometimes on projects, I'm using all three. And since one of them is graphite, it can also be used as a pencil if I have to jot down a quick note. If you are marking sew lines, cutting lines, or midpoints, this is an excellent tool. To you know they say to bury your threads as you go. And though I wasn't very good at doing it when I started quilting, I am very diligent about doing it now. And keeping a self-threading needle nearby makes the job so much faster and easier. What is a self-threading needle? It has this double eye with a slot at the top so that you can just slip in your thread. So when you can just grab it quickly with your right hand, your thread can be buried in seconds. I also use it occasionally for a seam that I didn't realize was open or tucking in a seam when there's too much bulk. Again, easy access makes it easy to take care of the problem. Having a grippy glove on your hand can help you so much in managing the weight of your project easing the need for you to use your fingers or your shoulders. You can use the official quilting gloves or you can use a pair like these, which are from my original sewing hacks from the dollar store video. So beyond the obvious use that you use them for quilting, they are also great for any time you're handling bulk. So I always have one on my left hand when I am binding a quilt, I also use it on my left hand when I'm assembling the quilt top and feeding through those long strips of fabric. I even use them when I'm doing finicky sewing like applique to give me some extra control. And I keep them in my left hand drawers, third from the top. This is such a great tool and it's also free. 
and I showed you how to make it in my video 10 sewing hacks with templates and I showed you how to use it in my video binding the basics. By popular demand, I now have a free download with the dimensions on my website. To make crisp corners on your binding, you need to manage both the top and bottom layers of fabric. And this tool helps you do that, both on the inner and outer folds. It also gives you an edge to mark your sew line on your binding strips and accurately measure your strips at the end for a perfect join. I also use it when I'm paper piecing to help fold the papers on the line. Now I know that I've mentioned a lot of videos here and I'll leave a link to them in the notes if you want to know more. Some of these items are free, some of them are available online, and some of them are only available through quilt stores. I'll leave the information below where I can. If you want to know more about binding, not only about how to make the perfect corner, but how to make them scrappy, narrow or wide, or just use your sewing machine, I'll leave a link to that series right here. And if you've missed my sewing hack series, I'll leave a link to that playlist too. Take care and I'll see you next time.